live. Awesome. On Facebook. On the boo. Okay. We're live? All right. So we're live. We're about to record, re record Homegirls um, season three, episode six on Arsenic. Yes. And are we recording? Is yeah, it, we're good. It's, it's recording. It's okay. Recording. So why are we redoing this? Well, because last time my dogs ran away. Yeah, it was a little bit of a. Oh, something's uh, happening. What is that? I think that's just Chloe. That's your baby. Okay. I'm going to sneeze. Am I going to sneeze? There's a false one. Sneezing is not happening. Okay, we're good? So the reason, as I was saying, that we had to do a re-recording, or that we're doing a re-recording, is because my dogs ran away last time. So while we were trying to record our podcast, the dogs kept barking, if you remember. I don't know if you saw the last Facebook Live. But if you did, the dogs kept barking and barking, and someone kept ringing our doorbell, and it was because... My dogs were running around the neighborhood. Yeah. And we also had a lot of camera problems. Yes. Too, so. It was just not worth, <laughs> po like, it. W the quality wasn't there. Would you agree? What are you yeah. drinking? Sorry. <laughs> 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 I had lunch right before I came here. <laughs> so you got a Powerade from, like, the fountain? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, it was okay. not bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's go ahead and start the podcast yeah, let's we start as usual with a video yes and today's video comes from dr eric berg and so let's go ahead and get started with the video I have one right here. I literally have one of those. Do you think Chris is poisoning me? Hopefully not. <laughs> I think I think back in the day, like in, in elementary school, they'd be like, if you have one of those little white lines, that means someone has a crush on you or something like that. <laughs> I, what I was told was if you have a white line, that means you told white lies. Oh, yeah. I think I heard that too. I think I heard that too. Yeah, so uh, either Chris is poisoning me, Chris has a crush on me. That's a nice one. Or um, I've been lying. Yeah. We yeah. have three <laughs> options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On, uh, and that was Dr. Eric Berg talking about the symptoms of arsenic poisoning. Yeah. And uh, as you're going to tell us, there are quite a few other symptoms as well. Yeah, yeah. It's I had no idea that that little white thing had to d I had don't anything think to do with that. I mean, honestly, I, I guess it could be arsenic poisoning since, as we'll find out, we're always exposed to arsenic, right? Yeah, yeah. But I also think that white line shows up for other reasons as well. I think Dr. Eric Berg over exaggerated a little bit there. I don't think. Yeah, I think I think so too. Yeah. So on that note, I'm Mary, and I'm Isi, and we're the Home Girls. And today we're talking about arsenic, the poison of kings. The poison of kings. Yeah. Oh my God, it's that sounds scary. I know. <laughs> sounds kind of like sexy, scary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but first, this is a re-recording. Yes, this is a re-recording. We is, recorded yeah. this podcast for you two or three weeks ago, but in the course of that podcast, disaster struck multiple times. Yep. And not only did we have a multitude of technical difficulties, but my dogs ran away in the middle of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't actually know how because it is very hard to escape from this office where we record yeah it was very unexpected yes so very somehow unexpected. they opened the front door using their thumbs that they don't have 
and ran yeah. out all through the neighborhood. And someone who knows us saw them, thankfully. Thank God. Right? I know, yeah. Someone who knows us saw them and managed to gather up all three dogs and get them back in the house. But in the course of that, she rang the doorbell multiple times. And then the dogs she got back in, I have a lot of dogs, started barking. And it just kind of messed up the whole thing. So that's why this is a re recording. Yeah. That was a long story, but my dogs are fine. They're jerks, but they're fine. Let's get yeah. back to arsenic. So. When I think of arsenic, I think of, like, a mystery novel or some, like, Victorian romance. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's – actually, that's kind of the reality. I mean, the true story of arsenic is a deadly combination of romance and mystery. Ooh. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, as we'll find out, arsenic in the no modern home is not as flashy as arsenic has been throughout history. If you recall, you know, the first half of this – season was like oh my god we're all gonna die yeah. and now the second half we're starting to taper off yeah it's a little more calm a little more calm now but arsenic is still everywhere it's sitting in your soil your drinking water your food and even the air we breathe is full of arsenic yep, yep. so um let's find out more but first I have to do a quick correction from our last podcast episode about Julius Caesar. Oh yeah, yeah. so remember we said that Caesar was drinking the lead wine Oh, my God. I almost said, like, lead, lead wine. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. Um, it came to me just then. He was drinking the lead wine. It probably made him infertile. Yeah. And that he had a one baby with Cleopatra. Yes. Well, I was wrong. And the fact is, I knew I was wrong. I should have never said that. I, I mean, literally took four years of history. There's no excuse for that mistake. GW is going to come at me and take my degree. <laughs> it's um, okay. Things happen. <laughs> things happen. Caesar actually had two children. He had a daughter named Julia with um, a wife who I believe she died before he hooked up with Cleopatra. Yeah. The wife died before he hooked up with Cleopatra. Yeah. So his daughter Julia, when she was very young, I'm talking like 14 or 15, he married her to his frenemy, a man named Pompey. Yeah. Uh, and Pompey is spelled P-O-M-P-E-Y. It's not Pompey. It's yeah. Pompey. Yeah. And Pompey and Caesar were, like, friends, but also not. I mean, they basically ruled Rome together. They had fought different campaigns, and you know, they knew each other, you know, saw each other a lot, basically. But really, on the surface, didn't actually care for each other. And to kind of assuage that uh, rivalry, uh, Caesar married his daughter to Pompey. And then Caesar goes off on a campaign and just you know, does his job. Yeah. Caesar was a general. He was not just Cleopatra baby daddy, but yeah. he was a general he, he too. He did stuff. He yeah. Did stuff. Wrote a couple books too. <laughs> While he was away, uh, Julia gets pregnant and then dies when she's like 16 years old. That's so sad. That's so young. Too young. I know. It's so freaking sad. So Caesar comes home and his daughter, but at that time she was his only child. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. Later on, he will meet Cleopatra. They never formally married, but they do have a son, Caesarian. So those children are two different, like, parts of his life, yeah. you know. Um, and much later in adulthood, he has the child with Cleopatra. That, I know those of you listening to this podcast are like, why do I even care? But honestly, it's such a glaring mistake. I couldn't let it, couldn't let it ride. Yeah. I couldn't let it ride. Yeah, that's fine. So, all right. Moving <laughs> on, finally. That was two digressions. <laughs> My dogs okay. are jerks. Uh, Caesar had two babies. Um, let's talk about arsenic. And Isis, can you guess who was using arsenic? Um, the the Romans and the Greeks. That's a very good guess. <laughs> that is a very good guess. Ed, uh, you're right. I feel like that's been the whole season. Yeah, that's, <laughs> always, that's always how it starts. That's they, always they, how it starts. They started a lot of stuff. <laughs> so uh, the Greeks and Romans are the ones that really made arsenic um, known as kind of this idea of a political or romantic type poison. Yeah. And that's because in the 4th century BCE, the Romans were, um, this is kind of ridiculous, they were poisoning people they didn't like on a political level. So if you had a political rival, say, like, instead of Joe Biden and Donald Trump debating, Joe Biden and Donald Trump just tried to poison each other until they succeeded and one that's died. That's so toxic. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's how Joe Biden became president. That is not a QAnon conspiracy theory. Oh, my I wanna God. Like, I want to just, like, I'm not trying to spread. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No poisoning actually happened. But, but that's just an example. Yeah. Right? So um, – it's the same idea. The Romans were using poison basically to get rid of political rivals. That's insane. I know. They were ruthless. Yeah. <laughs> so political campaign involved 
not just uh, debating and writing angry graffiti on the walls and handing out bread, which the Romans did all of that, but also killing each other. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so in 82 BCE, there was basically the Roman Senate acknowledged that this was out of control. Yeah. Um, too many people are dropping dead. 82 BC, they're like, all right, we need to pass a law. Mm-hmm. And uh, this law was called the Lex Cornelia, which was named after the dictator and constitutional reformer, Lucius Cornelius Sulla. And that was the first codified law in history against poisoning people. Wow. I know. The fact that there has to be a law for that. They're like, please <laughs> stop. I know. Stop. Stop poisoning people. Um, arsenic has a really big history of famous people who probably died of arsenic poisoning. But I want to talk real quick about a famous family, and that is the Borgia family. Do you know who the Borgias are? I don't think so. Okay. That, well, there's a TV show on, like, Showtime or Stars called The Borgias. Um, and there was also there was a show on Netflix called The Borgias. Too. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I ever heard of it. Uh, the Borgia was a family um, in Renaissance Italy. And they were headed by a, a guy who Pope out named Pope Alexander the Sixth. He was the Pope. And back in the Renaissance, popes weren't really known for being like good guys. So this Pope had a lot of children, which wasn't uncommon. So don't think Alexander the Sixth was the only Pope that had kids. Okay. His kids just happened to be he or I should say Pope Alexander just happened to use his kids for his political machinations. Probably said that word wrong. Anyway, his two most famous children were uh, Cesare Borgia and Lucrezia Borgia. And while Cesare was like the strong arm of the Borgia family, he fought in his father's campaigns and conveniently got rid of people. Lucrezia was rumored was known to poison people with arsenic. Oh, my God. Yeah. So you would come to dinner at the Borgias and never go home. (gasps) That's scary. And so there was, because that was a rumor, remember, this is just a rumor. Mm -hmm. The Italian Renaissance, by the way, was full of tea. Absolute vicious people. Wow. (laughs) Um, They called... If you were to attend dinner, they would say, like, beware of the gift of the Borgias because I was poisoned. Oh, my God. Yeah. There was also kind of a gross rumor going around that Lucrezia and Cesare, Cesare, Caesar, Cesare, let me get that out correctly. It's actually spelled Caesar, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, but in the Italian form, it's pronounced Cesare. That's interesting. Anyway, there was a rumor that Cesare and Lucrezia were sleeping with each other, which is gross because they were brother and sister. But like I said, the Italian Renaissance, full of nasty. This is a whole nother time. Full of tea. Whole nother time. Full whole nother lifestyle. tea. So. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, there's a couple other suspicious famous murders that have happened. It's long been suggested that Napoleon Bonaparte, when he died in 1821, was due to arsenic poisoning. Oh, my God. Yes. So they actually, this was such a well-known conspiracy theory that they took samples from Napoleon's corpse uh, in the modern time. And um, they basically never found any arsenic, but mm-hmm. the rumors still kind of persist. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's kind of a is it or is not. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see. Yes. There was, um, this is crazy. The United States ambassador to Italy, her name was Claire Booth Luce, or it might be Luce. Mm-hmm. She actually was forced to resign because um, she was poisoned. This is weird by flakes of arsenic paint landing in her food and then eating it. Oh, my God. Yeah, she didn't even know it was happening to her, but she got arsenic poisoning because, like, the paint in the room yeah. in the embassy was poisoning her. Wow. I know. That's so sad. Especially notice. Like you don't even realize that's happening. Well, yes, but also notice that was in Italy, too. So why yeah. is why is all this poisoning keep mm. going back to Italy? That's so true. Mm-hmm. It's sus. That's very sus. It's very, very sus. sus. Very sus. So in um, here's a famous murder from Connecticut. In oh, Connecticut. Connecticut. <laughs> this yeah. one's different. We're not we're not in Italy right now. We're in Connecticut. In 1878, two women were found murdered in their homes near New Haven, Connecticut. One had been savagely beaten and left it in a wooden area. The other was found floating in the water near an amusement park. Oh my God! But the autopsies of both these women were found to be poisoned by enormous doses of arsenic. Wow. Yeah. So, um, essentially, the murder trial was sensationalized. This is the Gilded Age. So, again, a lot of steaming tea happening yeah. at this time. Yeah. Um, and they were, the murder was called 
the arsenic under the elms uh, it led to a book by Virginia McDonald. Not that anyone cares about that, but it is weird that they were both beaten and drowned, but what they actually died of was arsenic. That is very weird. Very, very sus. That's overkill. Overkill, yeah. It's a little bit of Rasputin. Yeah. You know that joke, right? Rasputin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. <laughs> Somebody's going to laugh at my joke somewhere. All right. Finally, in 1998, arsenic was implicated in a sensational mass poisoning in Japan in which four people died and 40 were hospitalized when it, someone added arsenic to pots of curried beef, which were served at a village festival. That's so sad. I know. A whole festival. What's wrong with people? Yeah. So also, uh, this is really kind of interesting from an anthropological standpoint. In the mid-1800s, the mountaineers of central Austria, it's a very, very sus- specific area of the world. Yeah, that is very specific. Were studied because they were known to eat arsenic once or twice a week as a general stimulant and tonic. They were known as arsenic eaters. And they were reputed to have adopted the practice as means of building up a tolerance against poisoning by their enemies. Jesus. Which is a little, like, Princess Bride level of... Did that actually, like, work, or...? Actually, I think it does. So, part of me... My understanding is you can build up tolerance Mm -hmm. to certain poison. Kind of like with peanut allergies. You know, some people with peanut allergies, they can be given small doses of Uh peanuts to build up an immunity. I think the same thing works for arsenic. Wow. Don't yeah. do, don't try that at home. I know. Don't try that. And for those of you who didn't get my Princess Bride uh, reference, it is a scene in The Princess Bride where this guy, this Italian guy, oh, he's, oh, actually he's Sicilian. Okay. But okay. close enough. Same, same part of the world. Yeah, yeah. He poisons two cups and uh, challenges the dread pirate roberts to a battle of wits yeah and the dread pirate roberts only wins because he has been um eating the poison which is not arsenic by the way and that makes him immune okay yeah 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 that was another digression yeah, but yeah. i wanted to make sure people fully <laughs> understand if you have not seen the princess bride what planet are you on first of all because it's a great movie yes <laughs> <laughs> i agree so what about like non killing people methods yeah yeah all right so arsenic actually was found to be a great method for doing other things, not just murdering people. It's Thank God. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. What do you know? It was found to be helpful in insecticide, which we talked about. Yeah. Uh, rat poison, herbicides, and even wood preservatives, which we will talk about later. Yeah. As well as pigments in paints, wallpapers, and ceramics. Perhaps most famously in the Victorian era, cloth and wallpaper and paint. It was called Paris Green. Oh, that was arsenic. Actually, Google Paris Green. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please let me know what you find. Women were wearing Paris Green, which is essentially arsenic dyed cloth. And, and that's safe. It's very unsafe. Oh, <laughs> the, the understanding is perhaps why women were often fainting and sick and and very pale complexions yeah. is they were probably poisoning themselves with oh this Paris God. Green. It was in their clothes. Isn't it pretty, though? It is. Yeah, um, this trendy but toxic shade of green left thousands dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It wasn't just in their clothes, but in their wallpaper, which is how that... Um, or that lady the got the little flakes in there. Yeah, wallpaper and paint, too. So they were kind of getting it. They were absorbing it through their skin. They were inhaling it and then eating it if the paint flaked off. So, wow. That's uh, I just said it wasn't about killing people, and then we talked about killing people again. Yeah. What, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was also used in ceramics as well. I think I said that. but Yeah, yeah. Uh, essentially, they ultimately realized that insecticide, insecticide, rat poison, her- and herbicide was not actually a great like method for ar- when it has arsenic in yeah. it. It really kills the animals, but it also gets everyone else sick. So Not worth it. Not worth, not worth it. it. Now, this is interesting. In 1900 in Frankfurt, Germany, a pharmacologist named Paul Ehrlich became obsessed with arsenic what a what a life to lead uh, obsessed with arsenic oh no yes and he actually hypothesized that it could be used to treat illnesses because it's such a strong poison he's like what if we targeted it to kill illnesses without killing the whole body and specifically he decided to target syphilis which at that time 
Um, this is before the AIDS. AIDS wouldn't come for quite a long time. Okay. Before AIDS, syphilis was like the big STD. Okay. You know, there's three stages of syphilis. All get progressively worse. Eventually, yeah. you're like, your face falls off, you know. Um, I'm not even joking. He started experimenting with arsenic, and he went through 604 different organic compounds of arsenic before he stumbled on 605. Literally, he tried 600 in different forms, like combinations of arsenic, before 605, which he found out actually worked. It actually oh my was gosh. effective against he syphilis. He literally had to do every single form. Every, almost every single, yeah. Um, and it was considered, it's called salverson. It became the first drug that was safe enough to be given to humans and to be truly effective against the bacteria that caused syphilis. Wow, that's honestly crazy. I know. Ultimately, though, it was replaced by penicillin, which is a much safer way to fight syphilis. Uh, yeah, we still use that today. So We do. Do you want to know what was used to fight syphilis before arsenic? What was it? Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So oh, no. Nah. <laughs> let's go back to Cesare Borgia real quick. He actually had syphilis. Oh, and wow. He was, he was known to take baths in mercury to try to combat it. I can tell that you that. That sounds like a horrible it, idea. Yeah, it definitely didn't work. Y yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so in 1900, um, they came up with the arsenic for syphilis. And then later, of course, it's like I said, it's penicillin, wow. which is still penicillin. There's a couple other medical uses. Um, in the late 18th century, there was something called the Fowler solution, which was like a snake oil, basically. Uh, patented in 1786, whatever patenting means in 1786. Yeah. It was c it's a 1% solution of arsenic mixed in with a bunch of other garbage. But they advertised it to combat malaria, syphilis, asthma, uh, eczema, and psoriasis. Wow. Eczema. <laughs> eczema. Uh, none of that worked, by the way, except for the syphilis. But that was an accident, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was t it wasn't confirmed until our friend Paul. Are we surprised, though, that it didn't work? Yeah. <laughs> Snake <laughs> oil. Are we surprised? Interesting. Arsenic also has a history as a form of chemotherapy. Oh, my God. Yeah. So uh, in the 1880s, they were using arsenic for treatment of skin and breast cancer. Uh, also, it was found to lower the white blood sound. What? Blood cell count in leukemia patients. Unfortunately, though, although, well, it, you know, did lower the white blood cell count, they still tended to die of arsenic poisoning. This is not, <laughs> this is, this did not go well for them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. They really tried it. They really tried it. And you know what? They probably shouldn't have even tried it. <laughs> I think, you know, cancer has always been the most frightening thing for yeah, all human yeah. beings, right? I think people do get desperate, especially in a time when you don't fully... The dogs are barking. They better not be running away again. I know. Um, especially in a time when they didn't fully understand where, where cancer was yeah, coming from or yeah. what it was caused by. So I understand, right? Especially since you got this Fowler solution that's supposed to prevent everything or fix everything from yeah. syphilis to eczema. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. Interesting, though, um, they actually still experiment with chemotherapy and arsenic. Today? Like yeah, today. Do that? Wow. Yeah. Because it is, as I mentioned, such a strong poison – the idea is if we can, like, isolate it and target the problem yeah. specifically, it could potentially work, which I also think is the beginning of that movie with Will Smith where everyone turns into zombies because they find a oh, cure for cancer. I Am Legend. I That's Am Legend. Movie. Yeah. It's a That's bad movie. That's a sad movie. Although it's not arsenic. It's something else. But yeah, it's like the same sa idea. Same concept. Same concept. Yeah. Let's just hope, you know, we don't end up like that. But Seriously. <laughs> So essentially, uh, in conclusion, they stopped using arsenic in clothing, wallpaper, and paint. Thank God. Yes. They stopped using arsenic in a herbicide and pesticide. And really, the only time you have access to arsenic now is uh, medical, basically, uh, yeah. ways. Or um, you would have to buy it over the counter. And believe me, you're going to get reported if you try buying arsenic. Yeah, they're going to think you're crazy or something yeah and actually <laughs> let me google if you can you even buy it like that like i'm gonna google that like can you buy i'm gonna the fbi is gonna like knock down like my a door recipe for disaster my nsa agent who's monitoring my internet history is about I to know, get they're gonna be like excuse me why were you googling this yeah are you okay <laughs> they're gonna send me yeah they're gonna send me a a text message all right Ooh, okay. Toxic chemicals such as strychnine, arsenic, and cyanide are freely available for sale on the dark web. Okay, that 
that business thing. Um, you can. It's very easy to buy. Basically, you can just Google "I want to buy arsenic" and buy it on the um, on the internet, but not from like Walmart. You can't get on it. the dark web. On the dark web, which is not easy to get on. I look. <laughs> Uh, but look at the price, though. Like, a bottle is, like, $348. So you better, like, really oh, be. So this is, like. This, this is the. This, this is, is the, the regular internet. This is the regular web. This is not the this dark web. This is not web. the dark yeah. one. <laughs> this is the light one. <laughs> All right. Do it on your computer. <laughs> <laughs> Arsenic trioxide, 25 grams. This I item is restricted in certain countries. Let's see if we can buy it in the United States. Just I Canada. Have, I have Canada. <laughs> just this <laughs> website just looks so suspicious. Wait a second. States. Puerto Rico. Oh, you can't buy arsenic good, in Puerto Rico. Good, good. <laughs> All 50 states you can buy arsenic, but not Puerto Do you think that has something to do with the fact that they can't vote for president? They can't buy arsenic Yeah, either? I don't know. <laughs> I say that's a win. Statehood. <laughs> I say if that's you get a win. statehood, you can buy arsenic. Yeah. They don't. We don't want statehood, though. <laughs> they don't. Puerto Ricans don't want it. Uh, it also says this product will cause cancer and reproductive harm. This mo what in the hell? This item is manufactured or supplied by a small minority women, veteran, or disadvantaged business. What is this? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna get out of there before. I, yeah. I get kicked off the internet, yeah, get arrested <laughs> or something. Yeah. So. Okay, but yeah, that's it. That's my, that's the tea yes. on arsenic right there. Lots of poisoning. Lots of, Lots poisoning. of poisoning. On that note, let's talk about what happens if you do get poisoned yes, with which arsenic. We all, which you can already guess is not good. <laughs> from, from that first part, you can already guess. <laughs> okay, so what is arsenic? So Arsenic is a naturally occurring element that is widely distributed in the Earth's crust. It is found in the water, air, food, and soil. Everywhere. You can't yeah. escape it. Yeah. So there are two, differ uh, two different types of arsenic, two different forms, organic and inorganic. Which I'm really glad you're bringing up because I think the moral of the story today is going to be you don't really need to worry about naturally occurring arsenic. Yeah, because yeah. we're We've basically been exposed to it since we've been infants. Exactly, exactly. What you need to worry about is the inorganic. Yeah, yeah. So scientists, pediatricians, and public health advocates are getting more and more concerned about the more subtle and long-range health effects of low-level exposure to humans, especially for infants and children exposed to arsenic in water and some foods such as rice-based products. Rice. Yeah. Rice. Yeah. I love rice. Me too. I love rice. I used to I used to eat rice like every day. I, I literally, if you just gave me, like, a bowl of rice and some, like, vegetables. I yeah, would like, you could eat rice with anything. Chicken, mm, like, beef. No. We should just everything. do a whole podcast about how awesome rice is. Yeah, rice is great. <laughs> I love rice. <laughs> but apparently it's killing us. Yeah, yeah. So where is arsenic found? Arsenic found is just, oh, why did I say that? <coughs> arsenic <laughs> is found just about everywhere. It can leach into groundwater through rocks and soil, and it's used in pesticides, wood preservatives and tobacco and tobacco. oh yeah that's right you cigarettes are full of arsenic yes yes so and actually you know what? i'm gonna google if you can get arsenic from vaping that's yeah i wonder that i, I didn't know that that was in tobacco though which is very scary did they not tell you that in your dare class i don't remember anything <laughs> from the dare <laughs> class i just remember very dramatic videos of Someone getting into their car disoriented. For <laughs> oh, my God. First of all, you're not going to believe this. This is I, dig I digression. I apologize. We dropped a package off at UPS the other day, and Dare was outside. I didn't even know they still existed. Me either. <laughs> I thought they were done. I thought they pretty much proved that Dare didn't work. Dare I doesn't yeah, work, people. Yeah. I'm just going to throw like that one I feel like, if anything, it makes you more curious. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> if you're telling someone, like, don't smoke marijuana, it'll calm you down, you'll be like, wait a second, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Oh, by the way, yes. Vape, some vapes have um, lead and arsenic. What the? He lead and arsenic? Yeah. I think it depends on what. So, you know, there's that whole thing of, like, you don't really know where your vape is sourced from, like mm -hmm. your vaping fluid. 
So I think yeah. is it like if you buy the off brand vaping fluid or if you buy like the nicotine vaping fluid. Okay. So I don't know about like just the because yeah. some of them are just like flavors. Yeah. Aren't yeah. they? I think so. I don't know. I don't vape. I okay. don't know much about it, but I don't either, obviously. <laughs> um. So I think it has to do with the purity of your vaping fluid and that's how people were getting that like popcorn lung is because they were vaping oh yeah all the, all the all the kids yeah before <laughs> covid then we With were just the jewels, like the jewels the jewel yeah yeah the jewels so then covid hit and we're like we don't care anymore right right yeah before covid everybody was talking it was about like that. that february it was a huge huge deal it was a huge deal so we were so innocent we thought popcorn lung was what gonna kill us nope it was no no that's yeah. sad <laughs> anyway yes so vaping can have arsenic in it yeah wow that's insane okay sorry uh no you're good you're good uh arsenic is also released into the environment by volcanoes yep and mining uh processes which so is volcanoes would be naturally occurring yeah mining would be unnaturally yeah or uh, unless the mine itself hits like a vein of arsenic yeah. By the way, mining just sucks. I think we firmly established yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say that, too. I think we realize uh, mining is a very dangerous, scary job that I would never want to have. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the volcano thing, I didn't know. That's pretty interesting. You know, there's a volcano with, sorry, this is also irrelevant, but there's a volcano with blue lava. Where? I forgot what it's called. Somebody told me about it um, today, and I was like, what? And I searched it up, and it's actually a thing. What what is Blue it called? Blue lava. Vol it's a weird name. Like I can't even. It's in Indonesia. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, like okay. Where is the volcano? It's the island nation of Indonesia has an eerily beautiful volcano of blue fire. Um. It's Look the at it. the Ka Kawa Il yeah. Iljin volcano. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It looks beautiful though. Look at this. That looks crazy. Forbidden slime. Sorry, irrelevant. <laughs> I just remember that because <laughs> volcanoes. <laughs> but yeah, it looks cool. Um, let's see. Arsenic in groundwater is a widespread problem. Arsenic levels tend to be higher in drinking water that comes from ground sources such as wells uh, than from water from surface sources like lakes or reservoirs. So it's mostly just the wells which yeah. where arsenic kind of like leaches into there, the groundwater and stuff. Lakes and, and stuff like that, reservoirs. Those are fine. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Hi allegedly. They might be full of mercury, but. Hopefully not. <laughs> so how does arsenic get into your body? So most arsenic gets into the body through ingestion of food or water. Arsenic in drinking water is a problem in many countries around the world, like uh, Bangladesh, China, Vietnam, Taiwan, India, the U.S. Yep. <laughs> take a drink Wait, if you go back and re-listen to this whole podcast this whole season and yeah. take a drink every time we tell you that the u.s is the source of some sort of like terrible it's pot. pretty much like every episode <laughs> we have not banned the eu and great britain have banned like everything yeah. and the u.s is like yay it's fine poison yeah <laughs> arsenic may also be found in foods including rice and some fish where it is present due to uptake from soil and water it can also enter the body by breathing dust containing arsenic or through the skin, though this is not a major uh, route of exposure. So I think it's the main the main culprit is uh, ingestion through like food or water. Yes. And sometimes you hear about people being poisoned in the Renaissance with like lipstick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Probably. Uh, yeah. Arsenic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that goes back to the sexy, sexy history. Yeah. It clearly, it was implied there was some sort of sexual deviation involved with poisoning someone with lipstick. Yeah. Very weird. What a time to be I alive. Really, it's like it's like it's like it sounds unreal to me. You're wearing <laughs> like 17 layers of clothing. Yeah. You never take a shower. You literally pee in the hallway. Thank God. And I, I'm alive here and now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> okay, so drinking water and food. Um, the greatest threat to public health from arsenic originates from contaminated groundwater, like I said earlier. Um, inorganic arsenic is naturally present at high levels. Uh-oh. Are you running away again? I know. <laughs> Y'all get it. Mm. Okay, we're fine. Those damn kids. <laughs> so um, inorganic arsenic is naturally Every time I start talking. I know. <laughs> I swear. Luke. It's okay. He always has to back talk. Every I time. I know. He's like, what? What? 
Okay, so inorganic arsenic is naturally present at high levels in the groundwater of a number of countries. And y- you can already guess the U.S. was one of them, yes. Uh, <laughs> drinking water, crops irrigated with contaminated water, and food prepared with contaminated water are the sources of exposure. Um, oh, my God. You keep talking. I'm going to go see what their problem okay, is. Okay, okay. Fish, shellfish, meat, poultry, dairy products, and cereals can also be uh, dietary sources of arsenic, although exposure from these foods is generally much lower compared to exposure through contaminated groundwater. In seafood, arsenic is mainly found in its less toxic organic form, which is really interesting. I didn't know that any of these things could could really uh, be a source of uh, arsenic poison. Especially cereal. Cereal's a big <laughs> bummer, too. Yeah, I love cereal. So it could be when they say cereals, they mean, like, cereal grains. Like, you know, like... Yeah, that w- they were, like, watered or... I'm guessing that because it's, like, through water. Like yeah, that so, it like... It happens. You know that cereal is just, like, a generic word for grain, right? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me... Uh, let me type that in specifically. And then fish, I'm guessing it's, like... Cereal that we're exposed to. is a, any grass cultivated for the edible components of its grain. Um, so yeah, so any basically um, rice, wheat. Hold on, I'm pulling it up. Rice, wheat, corn, oats, barley, rye, and millet. That's considered cereal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just guessing like the way that happens is just it's just pro- yeah, watered pro- the by agricultural yeah, process. Yeah. We're not talking about like shredded wheat, although I guess you technically could be talking about shredded wheat, but. The actual cereal, the base yeah. cereals themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now let's get into the good stuff, uh, the health problems <laughs> caused the by the bad arsenic. stuff, the, the good, good bad stuff. stuff. That, yeah, that is, yeah, the, the good juicy, stuff that is juicy details. Good. Yeah. So, <laughs> inorganic arsenic is a confirmed carcinogen and is the most significant chemical contaminant in drinking water globally. Arsenic can also occur in an organic form. But inorganic arsenic compounds, such as those found in, uh, found in water, are highly toxic, while organic arsenic compounds, such as those found in seafood, are less harmful to health. So, yeah, inorganic is definitely the worst yeah. of the two. And uh, like I said, you know, we've been exposed to organic arsenic since child you know, infancy, essentially yeah. in the womb. Um, so it's... It, we have a natural tolerance, yeah. almost a natural tolerance. Obviously, if you're exposed to high levels of yeah, organic arsenic. That's when, it, that's when it really affects you negatively. Yeah. But the inorganic, as you mentioned, is the biggest threat. Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty much the, the things that are uh, found in water. So acute effects. So the immediate symptoms of acute arsenic poisoning include vomiting, abdominal pain, and uh, diarrhea. <laughs> so, is it food poisoning or is it arsenic? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely like a lot of these things have similar symptoms. Even the things we've talked about this yeah, season, they yeah, all have exactly. like overlapping. Yeah, and so these are followed by numbness and tingling of the extremities, muscle cramping, and death in extreme cases. But I feel like if, <laughs> if it was, like, an immediate symptom and death is one of them, I feel like it'd have to be a huge amount of arsenic or something, like, you were poisoned or something. Yeah, I mean, yes. And also, that sounds like a pharmaceutical commercial where they're like, this may cause vomiting <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, In rare cases, does. death may occur. Yeah, that, those are, like, the commercials you see on Hulu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The they're like, this could cause uncontrollable explosive diarrhea. Yeah. yeah scary yeah scary why now let's talk about the long-term effects so the first symptoms of a long-term exposure to high levels of inorganic arsenic for example through drinking water and food are usually observed in the skin and include pigmentation changes skin lesions hard patches on the palms and soles of feet and these occur after a minimum exposure of approximately five years so you have to be exposed to it for a long time or, as Dr. Eric Berg says, white lines in yeah, your nails. Yeah, the white lines in your nails, yeah. So, long-term effects, I feel like it's, uh, yeah, if you're ex- just exposed for a long time, not enough to, like, kill you But enough to make you sick. But enough to slowly, over time, like, start making you sick, yeah. yeah. 
You could ultimately die from it, I guess. No, yeah, it yeah, you can. It would you just definitely take a can. long time. So in addition to skin cancer, long-term exposure to arsenic may also cause cancers of the bladder and lungs. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified arsenic and arsenic compounds as carcinog- uh, carcinogenic to humans and has also stated that arsenic in drinking water is carcinogenic. Okay, why did I? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I put that twice. Um, yeah, so it has classified arsenic and arsenic compounds as carcinogenic to humans. And mice, obviously, because mice never get a break. Yeah, poor mice. <laughs> I feel bad for them. Other adverse health effects that may be associated with long-term ingestion of inorganic arsenic include uh, de- developmental effects, as we know, um, diabetes, pulmonary disease, and cardiovascular disease. Arsenic-induced uh, myocardial in, in infarction, in mm-hmm. particular, can be a significant cause of death. And, and which is a, a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, it's a heart attack, yeah. We're I don't know why they couldn't have just said heart attack. <laughs> I know, they said it's so fancy. Oh, speaking of Demi Lovato, we were just talking to her, by the way, before the podcast started. Didn't she have a song called Heart Attack? Yeah, she did. Yeah. Yeah. Full circle. You <laughs> tied in a Debbie Lovato reference. Yeah, she did. I think she did. Oh, my God. I called her she. Her. Didn't they? They, they, they. They yeah. had a. They do have a. Sorry a about that. Heart I didn't attack. mean to misgender yeah, yeah, yeah. Debbie Lovato. <laughs> um, in it's only been an hour. How yeah. am I supposed to? <laughs> you adjust. It's okay. As long as you realize it was wrong. <laughs> um, let's see. In China, arsenic exposure has been linked to black foot disease, which is a, which is a severe disease of blood vessel. Oh, my God. Blood vessels leading to gangrene. Yes. And gangrene is a bacteria that eats your skin. Yeah. And so you see that often with diabetic people. That's why they're like, oh, yeah, your foot's yeah. going to fall off. Like, that's a joke, but also it's not a joke. Yeah, yeah. Your it's foot will. It's sink. possible. It, it is can possible. happen, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's also possible that when, when people do get that, it also has to do with like malnutrition so i guess it's the combination of so essentially of it's gangrene occurs when you have an open sore which is why di- diabetic people tend to get it on their extremities because when you have type one specifically mm-hmm. um and and type two as well i i shouldn't exclude type two here but your blood isn't uh reaching your extremities properly okay which is why diabetic people often have cold hands and feet yeah, yeah, yeah. but when you get cuts or open wounds it doesn't matter the size the bacteria, um, if it doesn't heal correctly, it can get gangrenous. Okay, gangrenous. Okay. Uh, so with diabetic people, it happens because the blood's not flowing properly. Now, in extreme cases of poverty, like you said, in, yeah. in China, it's because they don't have proper medical treatment. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And so with the arsenic, um, essentially the tissue is going to be so dead, it um, becomes gangrenous and yeah. then That's really so dies. That's so scary. That's so sad. Yeah, that makes really me sad. sad. Um, so finally, arsenic is also associated with adverse pregnancy outcomes, yeah. which is like many of the Check other things. Check that off yeah. your disaster bingo. Many of the other things we've already talked yeah. about, like lead and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it is associated with adverse pregnancy outcomes and infant death with impacts on child health and exposure in utero and in early childhood has been linked to increases in death in young adults due to multiple cancers, lung disease, heart attacks, and kidney failures. Yeah, so numerous studies have demonstrated negative impacts of arsenic exposure on cognitive cognitive development, intelligence, and memory. Which is also something we've talked about a lot, yeah, cognitive yeah. development issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kids are always going to be, like, more, more prone. Because they're growing. Yeah, they're still developing. They're n- their little organs and stuff are not fully formed yet, so... They're too busy it does a, trashing it does your house that. To, <laughs> to notice that they're being poisoned by arsenic. But yeah, so that's all. Th- that's all I got. That's it. <laughs> well, that was actually expected. All of that I expected. Yeah. Because yeah. this entire season, we have just kind of repeated ourselves over and over again with side effects. Haven't yeah. We? Yeah. It's very sad. Huh. <laughs> next episode we won't though. And yeah. I'll tell next you why later. Is going to be different. For yes. Sure. Promise. But. Time for the household? Yeah, time for the household. Okay, so why are we talking so much about arsenic? Why is arsenic a household danger? There's a couple reasons, not just the water well, which we kind of insinuated. Yeah. There's a couple other things in your house that could actually give you arsenic poisoning. And one of those, for a modern, more modern day issue, is pressure-treated decks. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So prior to uh, 2004, all pressure-treated wood, all pressure-treated wood was treated with arsenic. 
and uh, that includes playground, wooden playground equipment. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, so there are some of these. The playground equipment pretty much have been gotten rid of. I know personally, my elementary school they got rid of all their uh, pressure faded wood. Yeah. That was in the nineties too. Jesus. But as far as decks, if you have a home where the deck was installed uh, two thousand four or earlier and it's pressure treated, it pro it is an arsenic pressure treated deck, and so you can kind of avoid overexposure to that if you're ever directly handling the deck just wash your hands okay yeah always wash your hands anyway you should have learned that over the last year yeah wash your hands people especially during these times yes um also if you live in a historic home you can get arsenic poisoning from wallpaper or paint yeah as we've discussed interestingly uh old taxidermy also (laughs) has a lot oh my taxidermy yes so do not Lick or cuddle old taxidermy, Which please. that should just be a given. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Keep the kids away from the taxidermy, <laughs> too. <laughs> Leave the taxidermy alone, people. Um, other things, household items, could be old paint or weed killer or pesticides. And obviously, yeah. as I mentioned, they stopped doing this, right? Yeah, yeah. But as you all know, Grandpa and Grandma never throw anything away. Yeah, I'm sure there's some lying around somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you're cleaning out the garage... And you come across really old paint or pesticide or weed killer, just um, safely dispose of it. Don't touch it. Don't try not to get it on your skin. Yeah. Try not to splash it on your face. If you have a child who drinks anything like that, in general, even modern day pesticide, mm-hmm. call poison control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. Always. The biggest one, we've said this repeatedly, is water wells. And not everybody has a water well, although this is interesting. When I was researching water wells, there's over 7,000 water wells just in Harris County. That's crazy. I know. I wouldn't think that it would be that many because 7,000 is a big number. Houston is the fourth largest city in the United States. So you think would be we would be mostly city water, right? Yeah, So yeah. the fact that there's over 7,000 water wells just in Harris County is pretty mind-blowing. It shows you how big and how rural some parts of Harris County no, really yeah. are. Harris County is huge. If you're on a city system, you don't need to worry about arsenic coming through your water. Um, the city has yeah. the city has made sure the city might be giving you lead poisoning as we as we know as we discussed but you're not gonna get arsenic poisoning it's at the water yes uh, hopefully unless someone dumps it in the well which is a whole nother book like that's like a victorian book isn't it someone Pro- dropping like probably yeah. it's like a sherlock <laughs> holmes I, I, situation i'm sure it's been done yeah. at some point in time um Water wells are going to be getting arsenic poisoning two ways. ECs kind of discuss these organically from the naturally occurring arsenic mm-hmm. in the groundwater and inorganically, especially here in Texas, we're getting it from fracking. So to frack, they actually pour a lot of caustic chemicals into the earth, and that is what wears away at the bedrock to release the petroleum products. Okay. And one of those chemicals is arsenic. They also re- pour chemicals into the earth for various mining processes like gold mining they pour arsenic into the earth too and that is how we're getting the inorganic contamination yeah is fracking it would be in texas it would be fracking if you're farther out west like colorado or even alaska um you know montana that kind of deal it might be from a combination of fracking and mining but if you're in texas it's definitely just fracking yeah and how do you prevent this you really want to be testing your water well at least once a year and not just for arsenic. You also want to be testing it for E. coli and all those other terrible things that can get into your drinking water system. But arsenic's a big one because it's the main cause of modern arsenic poisoning is through water wells. Just yeah. I think you, you yeah, said Yeah, I pointed that out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just maintenance. Yeah, just maintenance, t- especially if you have a water well. Get it tested. Keep up with it. Don't just let it sit there for years and years, not knowing what's going on in there, because that's your water. That is your water. Also, if you l- move into a historic home, um, ask some questions. Yeah, if you're moving into an older home, always ask questions. Now, the big thing is, is there an arsenic inspector? Not exactly. If you're getting a lead inspection done where they're taking paint samples, you could ask the lead inspector to mark an additional, when they send it out to the EPA, they can ask for an additional testing to see if there's arsenic in the paint as well. Yeah. Uh, But there's really, at least in Texas, not a very specific arsenic inspector. Yeah. I mean, I feel like. It's kind of, it's kind of rare enough. Yeah. That it's like, it's not needed like that. Yeah. Not as, not like lead. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 
I feel like we don't really need to worry about this that much. Yeah, I would say don't really, don't be scared. Don't be worried about it. The The odds of it happening, I feel like, are so low in this day and age. But um, Unless you really piss someone off. Yeah, yeah, unless you make someone really upset at you. But, I mean, it's really like if you have a water well and... It depends on the circumstances. I agree. I feel like of the things we've discussed, as I mentioned, we're ta- we're starting to go slope to the more. Yeah, calm. I feel like this is not one of the scariest ones. No, for sure. it's definitely like lower on the list. Definitely it's lower. scary for sure. Like you can get some pretty bad side effects. Yeah, things happen, but the odds of it, I feel like, are low. Yeah, that's my opinion, though, not a fact. That's my <laughs> opinion. opinion. <laughs> Disclaimer: <laughs> We are not responsible for anyone who gets arsenic poisoning. Yeah. Um, is it time for credits? Yeah, it's time for credits. So our intro is the best way to tell arsenic poison by Dr. Eric Berg, an alarmist, needless to say. Uh, music credit is Kevin McLeod of Incomtech. Source credit is Dartmouth Toxic Metal Research Fund and the National Institute of Health. Nice. Yeah. Make sure to check us out on YouTube at A-Action Home Inspection Group, Houston, on Facebook, and on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on the TikTok. Yes. At Houston Home Inspector. So our next topic is kind of going away from this whole, like, toxic chemicals. Yeah, yeah. Although there might be some discussion of toxic chemicals. Yeah, we'll see. We'll We'll see. see. We're going to talk about bugs. Yeah, I'm excited to This is a big one. This is going to be an interesting one for sure. Yeah, more specifically cockroaches, bed bugs, fire ants, which if you live in Texas, like, that is a serious, serious issue. Yeah, this will... This will have this will not be W B I bugs. No, be different different bugs. These different are bugs, bugs that terrorize us in our home. I think there was one other bug. Was there one other? I bug? hate cockroaches so much. So. I know. So in Texas, we'll talk about this next episode. But in Texas, we have like gigantic cockroaches. The flying one. Yes, and they're not like oh no. they're not actually the bad cockroaches. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's what we're gonna talk about. I had to look it up. Roaches, bed bugs, fire ants, and fruit flies. You know, I had a fruit fly problem these past few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it was so annoying, but I fixed it. Did they that apple cider vinegar, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> put put some soap in it. <laughs> they come up out of nowhere. They really do. I'm like, where did you guys all come from? And there's so many of them. Like, and they reproduce. Yes. And uh, they wake up every day and choose. No, violence. like literally, like I still have the little cup with the apple cider vinegar out, and like I looked in there yesterday, and I was like. Holy guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many just dead in there. Thank and God. <laughs> yeah, well, on that note, I'm Mary. And I'm Isi. And we're the homegirls. And we will gross you out next time with bugs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. We did it. We the dogs did not run away. The oh, camera worked. Hi. Yeah. The microphones worked. So. We will see you, uh, I think it's actually next week. Yeah. Oh, man, for bugs. Yeah, have a safe weekend. And now you get to awkwardly watch us disconnect.